Brendan Burns hasn't heard of you either, please welcome Brendan Burns! Totally 
bit different to regular fame, because it's like the difference between meeting Christian Bale and the real Batman. <laughs> and they can always look out and see, like, wrestling, wrestling, oh, fucking, oh, the, the Art of Wrestling podcast, that's his podcast. No, no. Get done. I'm like a Make-A-Wish guy. Fuck, <laughs> you're not dying or anything, are you, mate? <laughs> Is that fucking Mark? Yeah, mate. See? I know everyone! <laughs> Can't believe you didn't recognise me. <laughs> because I'm a liberal. I don't see chairs. <laughs> oh my god, what a night, Caroline! What a night! <laughs> Fuck, that's so... I'm so glad you're here. You're going to justify so much shit I have to say tonight. <laughs> that is so weird, because I was just talking to my... Uh, Andy fucking, the Make-A-Wish thing, I tried to get through a joke last night at, uh, for Paul Mooners. Oh! And, and, yeah, yeah. And the joke that I couldn't get out was like, it was for, we were watching Celebrity Pre Apprentice uh, in the, the US version only the other night, and uh, it's, it's, it's with Donald Trump, and there was a Make-A-Wish kid whose dream, his Make-A-Wish, was to meet Donald Trump. <laughs> and he dressed like Donald Trump. He had his hair like Donald Trump. He wore a suit like Donald Trump. And he goes, when I grow up, I want to be just like you and fire people. <laughs> and you ever see a Make-A-Wish kid where you're not really rooting for him? <laughs> I just was, I was only talking to my mum about you about, like, fuck, only like four weeks ago. Because my mum, to this day, I still don't have the heart to tell her, right, because uh, I used to volunteer at Rocky Bay Village in Perth, where we're from, right, a disabled centre. And my mum thought I was bunking off school. And when she found out I was volunteering, and I still don't have the heart to tell her the truth, right, because when she found out I was volunteering, and to this day, she's still like, oh, my little Brendan. Oh, the angry clown with a heart of gold. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have the heart to tell her that the only reason that me and Cameron McLeod used to volunteer at Rocky Bay was because Mark and Billy Amos could buy cigarettes before we could. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no one wants to check your ID when you're in a fucking wheelchair. No one wants to get busted staring too long and shit. <laughs> oh, fuck you, he's laughing. Don't you patronise him. Don't you patronise him. <laughs> Actually, I wasn't. <laughs> 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 you fucking wriggling and shit. What are you doing? <laughs> tell, mate. <laughs> so, so, are you like from Perth as well? Oh, no, I'm from London. <laughs> You're from London? What's your deal? Got sent up here. Give me any service? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what'd you do? Just graffiti. Graffiti? Yeah. Are you Banksy? Are you Banksy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get grumpy. You got caught doodling your fucking child. He's <laughs> <laughs> okay with wriggling uh, jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> try it, try it! <laughs> criminal about it. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about it, community service doesn't quite make sense, does it? Because, like, say, say you rape and fucking kill someone, then you stick him with some poor bloke who can't defend himself. Like, Mark has... Uh, choreo... Atatoy... Cerebral palsy? Is that right? He, he's a few to say. <laughs> Yes, because a non-time
entirely sure that I want my uh, fame in my life because I was touring with a, 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 a uber famous fres uh, wrestler called Mick Foley, right? And, um, and Mick is crazy famous. He gets bothered every five seconds. Oh, hey. Right? And, <laughs> right? And, and he gets bothered every like 20 seconds, right? I mean, Mick is so famous. I can name at least five islands where the ten dollar note is a picture of him taking a big curly shit. <laughs> and we're in Montreal, and just grown men. He's just completely recognisable. He's like, he frankly, he looks like my imaginary friend, right? He, he looks like a great big gay bear lumberjack, right? <laughs> and he kind of talks to me. I'm like, hey, you're not real. I did loads of mushrooms in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, were, we were going to get a meal uh, in Montreal late at night, right, at the, in Chinatown. And these five Asian guys are at the front of this restaurant, and they just see him and they just lose their shit. Grown men turn into children. And they're like, holy fucking shit, it's Big Foley, it's Big Foley, right? And, and I'm like, fellas, you know what? We're tired. We just want to get something to eat. You know, just wait outside. Then you can have your photos and your autographs and everything. And then one of them has the balls to follow us in, right? He sits down at our table and starts going, this place is amazing, the pad thai is awesome. And I'm like, mate, what the fuck did I say? Wait outside. And he goes, no, 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 this is my restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in a weird stage of life where I'm not sure I want that in my life, right? And uh, so on the off chance, uh, is there anyone in this room uh, who has no idea who I am uh, or, or what I do whatsoever? Anyone, preferably near the front. Anyone? You? You're brand new? Hello, Brendan Burns, building a fan base one person at a time. <laughs> That's Caroline, you already know her. Right? <laughs> she brought you? <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> and uh, what's your name, please? Natasha. Natasha. Natasha, pleased to meet you. I'm Brendan Burns. Please don't feel embarrassed. I've given you no reason to have heard of me. Uh, and, but it's a nice mood, isn't it? Don't you like the fact that there's so, it's so familiar? You know, it's a bit like a secret handshake. It's like a club, you know? And uh, you'll never see me play the O2 Arena, right? Because even if I could garner like 2,000 fans or 9,000 fans, right? It would still just be, I'd have the big fanfare. I'd have the fireworks, right? You know I'd have fireworks, right? And I'd walk out and it'd just be 9,000 people going, all right, Brendan. <laughs> what happened to you this year? <laughs> Still not drinking? Very exciting. <laughs> See, Natasha? Is that your name right? Yes, sir. See, that's a callback from six fucking years ago. And we're going to get this show is for you because it's five reasons. We're counting down the top five reasons you've never heard of me. And coming in at number five, I make back references to all shows. <laughs> Case in point, are there any members of the One Eye Club in? Yay! That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> right. Uh, reason number four, I yell and I swear. Now, I found out only earlier this year, Natasha, that uh, the reason I've been yelling and swearing for 23 years is because uh, I got diagnosed as partial hearing. Apparently, I've been deaf since the age of five. <laughs> and you hear people laughing, much to my chagrin, no one in my industry is surprised. <laughs> the day I announced I've been deaf since five, my Facebook was inundated with messages from other comics going, oh no, now you really know how badly you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so if there are any members of the press in and you've ever dismissed me as, oh, all he does is yell and swear, just like to let you know, you've been kicking a spastic. <laughs> and if you're worried about me using that word, don't worry, I'm card carrying, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, I'm in the club now. <laughs> Fucking come on. Uh, Any other specials in the his house? <laughs> <laughs> his house at our late night show and he doesn't like it when I act like it. <laughs> well, when I act like it just comes off as au fait and lobstery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Saying his house. His house? Is that showing my age? This is weird. This is weird. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, right? Do you have any idea how hard it was to resist the urge not to pull the face? <laughs> <laughs> Particularly as they don't come with a photo. Uh, <laughs> they almost wish they did. You know, because I've got, like, I've had a window into your world this year, Mark, of like people like over staring at me at train stations 
and like speaking really slowly, almost trying to lean around the till to see if they can see my back looking for a fucking hump. Right? <laughs> and I'm almost tempted to just go, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So uh, what it's like now being able to hear, I'm missing 36 decibels in each ear, right? So if the volume's at 10, I hear six and a half. If it's at three and a half, I hear nothing. Which might not sound like much, but to put it in a visual perspective, instead of like great big fuck off Coke bottle glasses, I'd have like Coke bottles for glasses. Like a cartoon character that's just seen boobs. Good for you for covering up. <laughs> Take that boy with tape on his face. Mine! <laughs> But if I crack up laughing, like for no apparent reason, it's not out of arrogance or vanity, it's because I don't have depth perception yet, and I haven't learned to whittle out all the white noise that you have uh, over, you know, over three decades. So if I crack up, it's, uh, it's actually because it's as if there's a hundred perspex pipes coming from each and every one of your mouths directly into the back of my skull. So if I crack up, it's because there's a guy down the back giggling really softly, but all I hear in my head directly is... <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my keys. You're fine, mate. The oven's not on. Right? <laughs> I'm having so much fun! Uh, and so what it's like being able to hear for the first time is the best explanation I can give is uh, uh, play one, uh, Beethoven makes you cry. I've never heard the ages of classical music. And going to the toilet, fucking hilarious, Natasha. <laughs> I had no idea it made that noise. I was just in the loo, just day one, just like, fucking, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> fucking Niagara Falls over here and shit. In his house. No. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> Like I've been, I spent the first day in the kitchen just laughing at all our appliances <laughs> and saying to my wife, has the fridge always done this? This is fucking awesome. <laughs> and the straw that broke the camel's back that made us realise that uh, something was definitely up was uh, my wife and I, we were at the, uh, the UFC, uh, Chow Sun Anderson Silva, most anticipated fight in mixed martial arts history. To give you an idea, 9,000 people, 9,000 people turned up just to the way in to watch naked men stand on scales, right? <laughs> and the place is packed, and it's just this fervid, gladiatorial mood in the room, and just, ah, ah, ah! And during the weigh-in, Anderson Silva, shoulder bars, tail on the chin. Place goes nuts, ballistic. Commentator goes to interview him, you can't hear a thing. It's just this deafening round. And my wife goes, ah, oh, don't start screaming at him while he's not interviewing him, I can't make any of this out. And I'm looking at the monitor, the big screen, and I just went, he said, Charles doesn't respect the UFC, he doesn't respect my country, and tomorrow I fight. <laughs> right? And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I can't hear you or my son because it's so pitch affected, right, when you're in the next room. How the hell did I make that out? And my wife, who is a comic genius, said, that's because you're the only man in this building who has trained his hearing to negotiate the sound of one man laughing in a room full of people booing. <laughs> It's got me through a lot. I've been booed a lot, but can you imagine what an audience looks like when they're booing with the volume turned down? <laughs> Fucking idiotic. I've never felt smarter in my life. Particularly <laughs> that moment when they all decide they're all going to do it. Like, let's express ourselves collectively, shall we? Boo! Boo! I'm like, you look like such cattle. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Boo! Boo! For people that can't even muster a fuck off. Right? <laughs> So I go to the audiologist, and um, the first thing he asks me, he goes, is it loud at your work? <laughs> I have to go, apparently, when I'm on, right? <laughs> and he sticks me in this soundproof booth, right? And he starts making, uh, uh, sticks speakers in my ears, and he starts making noises of descending volume. Uh, with a machine, he's not just outside, like, <laughs> I can see your kazoo, right? <laughs> And I knew I was in trouble because by the fourth noise, I heard nothing. It was just, ee, 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 nothing. And then he goes, repeat these words after me to the best of your understanding. Again, in the same volume, he goes, tea tree, car park, 
lavender. Touch of tea. <laughs> Set the car park. <laughs> trouble because by the fourth noise all I heard was the edges of the words just <laughs> right and, and at least three times I had to say to him now I know in my soul you didn't just say cunt <laughs> <laughs> a couple of times I had to go well that's just racist <laughs> so I come out of the booth and he goes um let me ask you something uh did you have meningitis as a kid and I went yeah I had it when I was five and he goes, you've been deaf since the age of five. And I'm ashamed to say, Natasha, the first thing that popped out of my mouth was, does that mean I can have the parking space? <laughs> and he goes, no, but you can have the disabled rail car. <laughs> then I felt a real weird mix of emotions, very heavily juxtaposed, like labelled and cheating at the same time, you know, because disabled covers a shitload, doesn't it, Mark? You know, and like, sometimes political correctness doesn't get it right. You know, like they're like differently able. I think that's crueler. I think that's rubbing it in. You know, it's like, what? Can you make shit float with your mind? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark and I will be appearing in next year's room. <laughs> uh, but you know, and, and sometimes when it comes to the most disenfranchised in our society, we don't change our attitudes to them, we don't change our empathy to them, we just change the word we call them. And for me, that's a bit of a booby prize sometimes. It's a bit of a cop-out. It's like, there you go, you know what? I changed your word. You're differently abled now. You should say thank you. <laughs> and it's like, can I have a rant to get to my work? Don't get greedy, you fucking spastic. I changed your word. <laughs> That'll do you, right? And like differently abled, I mean really, what's my superpower? I can kind of lip read in context. Well, fuck it, <laughs> to the rescue! <laughs> but then on the other side, there's the cheating element, right? Because, I mean, disabled? Really? You know, I mean, what? I can't hear women and children. <laughs> I'm the luckiest man alive! <laughs> I hate that joke, Natasha. I just didn't want you to think I'd missed it. Right! <laughs> so weird, right, that while all this is going on, right, and then it just, and then it just pops out of my mouth, right, all of these emotions are just flooding around, I'm sitting there thinking of all the fucking troubles I've had in life, all the bloody, all the times people presumed me a coked up arrogant cunt and they were only right half the time, <laughs> instead of sitting with this, just it blurts out of me almost unconsciously and I just went, does that mean I can make spastic jokes? <laughs> and that's when I discovered the audiologist wasn't my demographic. Because <laughs> he looks at me and goes, I don't think anyone can diagnose that. <laughs> but isn't that bizarre? Isn't that so obsessive? You know, it's like three and a half decades, right, of pain. And, and all I can think is, what can I get away with? Now I've got one of these. And that's not the first time I've done that, Natasha, right? I'm now uh, going to read to you from my book, uh, Fear of Hat Loss in Las Vegas. Uh, that's right, I am a published author. Uh, <laughs> although, no, real big deal. So is that uh, woman, uh, the one with the tits. Frank Greer? To Frank Greer, come on, that was the funniest thing you could have fucking said. <laughs> that was comedian speed. That's why we're doing a late night show, folks. <laughs> People underestimate my wrestler friend. <laughs> Probably because he lives in a world where black people dress as witch doctors. <laughs> that guy! Your name is Johnson. I'm right here. <laughs> well, that'll teach you to take 22 days to see the fucking show you cut. <laughs> Myself, Paul Preventa, and Barry Castanola went to Las Vegas in pursuit of that photograph. I wanted to be the guy in that photograph, and then I figured I would solve all my problems in life. Uh, didn't work, turned out I was still me. Right, but uh, one of the many questions we asked ourselves on this trip was, where does the line lie in comedy? And sometimes you can find yourself so far over the line that you can no longer determine where it was in the first place. And one of the things we did on this 
trip to test this is we each had a dare called the funniest thing we could think of. And uh, that challenge was we wanted to see what we could get away with in a casino if Barry pretended to be mentally challenged. Uh, now, I, 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 I must stress, we were not making fun of disability. We were making fun of people's reaction to disability. Uh, admittedly, well, taking liberties with people's better nature. <laughs> but you know what? No one got hurt or upset because Barry's portrayal was so human. There was nothing cartoonish about it. It was so complete. And also, to top everything off, everyone that we encountered, we made their day. Because I don't know if you've ever been to Vegas, right? But you can do anything. You can fuck hookers. You can score meth in seconds. I'm sorry to tell you in front of your girlfriend. <laughs> the only thing you cannot do, Natasha, is do not fuck with the gambling. Unless you've got someone special with you. Then, so long as you look like you're trying to stop them, all bets are off. <laughs> and the weird thing is, Vegas being Vegas, everyone's just looking for an omen. So everyone's presumed him to be some sort of idiot savant. <laughs> as he's like watching the ball roll around the roulette table, it lands on black 16, and he goes, black 16! And the croupier goes, black 16! And everyone thought it was a premonition. <laughs> as opposed to him just reading it, and reading it out. You know. So then he'd move his chips to black, everyone had moved their chips to black. He'd move his chips to red, everyone had moved their chips to red. At one point, while well, the ball is in play, and I cannot stress how beaten up with baseball bats this will get you by gangsters. It's still in play. He reaches across the table and goes, Blue! There is no blue, Natasha! <laughs> now, along to the right, I'm really sorry, but my um, hearing aid battery has run out. Uh, how's my volume? I'm not bothering anyone, am I? Is it a bit loud? It's okay? Okay, cool. I can tell in the throat now. <laughs> I know. Actually, when I did find out I was deaf, I went back and listened to old footage, and I have to say, fucking unbearable! <laughs> I can only apologise. Just 
stuffed his face in and tore away. When he sat back up, his face was covered with chicken and sprinkles. The waitress frowned at us at first for laughing, but then burst into fits herself when she saw his face. Again, mentally challenged or not, funny is funny. <laughs> fellas, fellas, I really don't know about this. Keith piped up. This is bang out of order. We have to stop. I could only communicate with pad and pen. I scribbled a note and held it up. Clues to know. No one gets hurt unless we stop. <laughs> Revenz and Keith appreciated my point while Barry spat out his potato salad. <laughs> you know, Brendan used to work with the differently able, Revenz said to Keith, and I wrote in response, and do you know, the funniest thing is, you can play this game with them and they totally go with it. That's fucking true! When I used to work at AdWest and like, uh, Billy and Mark, right, the thing is because in Australia we let disabled people on regular buses with regular people as opposed to those horrible Auschwitz trains you fuckers have, right? <laughs> I shit you not, every day before the school kids got on the bus they used to sit there just perfectly normal, all chill, and the moment the kids got on the bus they'd all just start fucking wigging out, right? <laughs> Anytime you go past a special bus and they've got their face pressed up against the window and they're licking and clawing and shit, they're totally fucking with it. <laughs> <laughs> totally fucking with it. <laughs> Not a dark humour comes from the chair, right? <laughs> I don't see chairs, sorry. <laughs> see the entrance behind Barry. Suddenly, something caught his eye and he gripped the table in anguish. Oh, no, 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 fellas, fellas, we really have to stop. He gestured subtly with a nod. We all turned to check out of the corners of our eyes. Approaching us was a family of three. Mum, Dad, and their child, who had Down syndrome. I'm with ya. I'm totally with ya. <laughs> Keith leant in towards us. Guys, we have to stop. He whispered intently. Again, I held up the notes I'd written one after the other. A very calm look on my face. Who's to know? No one gets hurt unless we stop. We all acknowledged the undeniable truth. We were committed. To hammer the point home, Barry yelled, I want a balloon! <laughs> <laughs> the other family smiled and waved happily at us as we looked over. Keith, resigned to our unsung agreement, waved back at them. He then whispered the funniest thing each of us has ever heard. I wonder if that kid's acting too. <laughs> It's a bit cruel to ask you to come to a stand-up comedy show and read to you from a book. But that brings you neatly... Under the book. Uh, is it under the book? Thanks, Caroline. Right, and it brings me neatly on to reason number three. You've never heard of me? I try to squeeze too many ideas into one small space, slash, I suck on TV. <laughs> See? I even ran out of room there! Right? <laughs> now, Natasha, before I show you this next footage, please try and remember, only a couple of minutes ago, you kind of like me. Okay, because I'll be honest with you, I'm not very comfortable with this. I'm not proud of this at all. This is footage I'm about to show you from, uh, the, it was during the Ricky Gervais Mongate scandal, right? Yeah, and those who are not familiar, Ricky Gervais, right, went on his Twitter feed one day and made what he called, quote, unquote, mong faces for a day, going, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I first heard about it, I dismissed it like most of you, it was just a bit stupid. Then, when it was front page news for like a month, and everyone was behaving like it was the worst thing happening in the world, I then started to go, now this is kind of funny to me. Because here's what happens in my career, Natasha, right? Once every five years, a comedian will do something stupid and offensive, and some tabloid media television will come to me and go, hey, you're stupid and offensive. <laughs> come on and say something stupid and offensive. <laughs> Which is kind of stupid and a little offensive. <laughs> and then they say, come on and say whatever you want. And I go on, I say whatever I want, and then I'm not allowed on telly for another five years. <laughs> 
Now to set the scene, ladies and gentlemen, as well, uh, if there's any foreigners in the room, uh, I was appearing on a show called Daybreak ITV. <laughs> you hear the giggling in the room? It is the most vanilla milk toast tea and biscuits television you could ever appear on. It's an environment where I have no concept of where the line is, right? It's not out of like, yeah, or anything. I just don't get it. I don't fit, right? And uh, the segment before me, there was a woman, right, who was acting as a spokesperson for brand new technology. She'd been paralyzed in a skiing accident and she was representing this brand new technology, allowing her to walk unaided for the first time. So bear in mind, this is the segment just before me. And this lady is adorable, ladies and gentlemen. I should fall vertically. And an electric current went through my legs like a zzz. Keep your eyes on her hands. Me and there was nothing. I was left with no sensational movement below my pelvis. She points at her vagina and, and he stifles a laugh. Right? <laughs> effectively insinuated numb cunt, right? And, uh, and he's holding the laugh because he knows he's not supposed to. That's why he has to hold one in. That's actually his decency at work, right? And this woman, I can't stress just how adorable this lady is. Oh, oh, so thank you. It's a real pleasure to be here. Very much of luck. Can I get a hug? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, there's not a dry eye in the house. That clapping you can hear in the background is me. And they may as well have called the next segment, and now here to defend the word spastic, Brendan Burns. <laughs> <laughs> now you'd think, Natasha, wouldn't you? You'd think that in this environment, I maybe would have considered context. <laughs> about my silly, pointless art form, now is in the time to make it, right? And I was there debating a lady called Sarah from Mencap, lovely lady from a mental health charity. And before we went to wear, right, during the break, that lady presenter in the green dress started checking with the censors, right, which words for disability were and weren't okay. And she just started reeling off all the not okay ones. <laughs> and she was like, which of these are okay? And she's going like, mong, mongy, spaz, spaz face, spazzo, spazatron, spazorama, spazonic. Right, and Sarah laughed. Of course she did, because there's nothing funnier than offensive words being listed officiously. <laughs> never funnier to me than when I hear his material regurgitated by an offended lawyer. <laughs> I'm just in stitches, you know. Offended people saying an offended sentence is just lack such self-awareness that always cracks me up. Mr. Burns, is it true, sir, that on May 29th you yelled cunt in a theatre? <laughs> So Sarah laughed, of course she did, but the thing is, I haven't got a hearing aid yet. So I turned to her and yelled and swore and went, Fuck you, you laughed! Because I thought I was being affable. <laughs> I did, I thought it came out as, Fuck you, you laughed, but it was, Fuck you, you laughed! And everyone around me just went, What the fuck are we about to let on live television? <laughs> so everyone is reeling on their toes, right? So here we go. You know, there's all, some of it's always offended by some comedy, isn't it? It's a, to everyone's taste. And should it be free to, to laugh? Should we be free to laugh at all areas of society and find humour in everything? I actually agree with that. I think that comedy should be able to deal with everything, and I don't think that anything should be off limits, which may sound interesting. But I think that comedy needs to deal with issues like disability intelligently. Yeah, no one see what's slightly off about that argument. Because that's including learning difficulties. So you saying, I think jokes about learning difficulties are okay so long as they're clever. <laughs> that's like saying, I think jokes about blind people are alright so long as they're visual. <laughs> now, I wish I'd said that, Natasha. I wish I'd said that, because that would have been something resembling amusing. <laughs> Maybe bordering on charm, right? I wish I'd said that. You know what I said? What I said was... <laughs> You want to be able to get away with laughing behind their back? No, I'm separating two issues. What's more, we were talking about the words. <laughs> Earlier they just listed those words and you laughed. No, I'm not. You did laugh. You did. You did. You did. You did. You did. 
Okay. When you listen to the well, words okay. off camera. Okay. What I'm going to do is actually give you some context. <laughs> Let's give you some context. So if I invited you to meet Neil, a young man that I know, who's had to leave his home because his neighbours and in his neighbourhood he's been called names like this, terms of abuse, in this way, beaten up on his doorstep and had to move to another neighbourhood because of it. That's what's going on in, in society. Now, that baffled look on my face is she just said, let me give you some context and then took it miles out of context. However, that's me trying to win an argument in hindsight. And I've already been a prick there, so there's no need to be a cunt here. <laughs> <laughs> but let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, it's not a fair fight, is it? It's not a fair fight, because she's nervous. Because it's live television. I'm not nervous because I'm not that bothered about appearing on television, which is why I'm so very bad at appearing on television. <laughs> well, I wish I'd said, Natasha, I wish I'd said something along the lines of, well, I'd probably say to Neil that I'm sorry that Sarah feels the need to exploit your situation just so that she doesn't have to feel sanctimonious. <laughs> I wish I'd said that. <laughs> not what I said. <laughs> what I said was... <laughs> Are you funny? Are you funny? Are you funny? Are you funny? No, no, I, I'm almost glad I did that because I made her laugh. Because she's no longer nervous. Because she realises she's debating a red jacketed fool. <laughs> As if to hammer that point home, I go and declare. Sort of attacking the other guests. Why don't you just put forward your, oh, your, your, your argument, argument on this? And why you are I was just surprised by that argument and I was a little offended. So why is it okay to use terms that some people are offended well, by? Because we live in such a global communicative world. What does that even mean? <laughs> That's a tautology sandwiching a word I'm clearly trying out for the first time. <laughs> Because we live in such a globally communicative world. Because we live in such an earthy, talky, planetary. <laughs> you fucking retard. Retard! I know I'm not supposed to say that word, but you know what? If black people can have the N-word back, I'm having a retard. I fucking earned it. <laughs> now, up until now, our only real crime is we haven't made our points very clearly. Perhaps a little bit of preparation would have been in order. But you know what? I managed to make one thing clear. Oh, yeah, I'll get one thing across, and that is... <laughs> I'd Ricky me yesterday as well and said personally that he had nothing to do with disability. Oh, well done, Brendan. <laughs> you let everyone know that you know Ricky Gervais, you fucking prick with grandmother's glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the worst thing, Natasha? I don't know Ricky Gervais. <laughs> And what's more, after this appearance, he distanced himself from the argument immediately and apologised to everyone involved. So at least some good came of it. But I'll tell you what, I'm very glad to see some friendly faces here tonight because see if you can spot the beyond everyday word that I dare to like put in inverted commas in patronising the late speak. See if you get there before me, right? It's well, I'm intrigued by I'm coming from a point of ignorance here because I've been up in New South Wales in the snowy mountains. Uh, I don't really know what's going on in the news. <laughs> <laughs> the news, I believe you people call it. I haven't been following the news because I'm not very big on knowledge. Because I'm a bit of an ignorant fucktard. <laughs> so bearing that ignorance in mind, it is staggering that I have the gumption to go and make this argument just when you thought I fucking couldn't get any fucking lower. I fucking kick the bottom of the barrel out and start digging. Uh, I love that tax has got like her legs crossed now. I, mean, I can't even look at you, Brendan. I don't know how you devoted this show to me. I can't even fucking leave. <laughs> Invariably, I wonder what's really happening in the world that we're distracting everyone with a man pulling a face. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> So let's just retrace our steps, shall we? A woman has just stood for the first time, time unaided. You're effectively on television defending a millionaire while bullying a woman from a charity. And you fucking can't flap of a man have the balls to make the, yeah, man, the media, man. Yeah, what's really going on in the world, huh? I'm up here shooting truth holes in the roof with my weak stained gums of reality. I'm 42 and I got tears in my 
jeans. I'm stuck in the 90s, back when I was sexy. His ass. <laughs> Natasha, it still gets so much worse. <laughs> because up until now, we're aware, you know what's happened. I yelled and I swore, right? And I tried to squeeze too many ideas into one small space. I hadn't done enough planning, but bear this in mind. This was the ace up my sleeve. This was pre-planned. This took actual, genuine effort. For instance, okay. are you bothered by my shirt? Oh. I like lots of people who are. Oh, for those of you that can't make that out, that's me as Jesus. <laughs> Even looking at the monitor to make sure it gets on, I'm transparently trying to drum up another fake controversy off the back of another fake controversy in an attempt to sell tickets just because Natasha doesn't know who the fuck I am. <laughs> that shirt made, and I may as well have just written down with homework. <laughs> but bear in mind, Natasha, I yelled and I swore. Everyone's really on their toes. So someone in the studio in the gallery is just going, don't close up on that. <laughs> it just looks like I'm really into Jesus. <laughs> Fiction, that would have been something resembling a fucking coherent point. <laughs> Which brings me neatly on to reason number two. You've never heard of me, Natasha? Some people find me offensive. <laughs> now, you know what? I genuinely don't think I'm offensive. I think I market myself in the right way. I don't think I, um, I, I hijack anyone with what I do. You really have to fucking seek me out. And, uh, you know, I, I wholeheartedly believe that my heart is in the right place. And I also believe with every fibre of my being that everybody is entitled to a sense of humour about themselves. Everybody, right? And, and I think one of the reasons that I run into trouble, and I only get it in the UK, and it's because I tend to make fun and keep my liberal white dickhead in check. You know, we all keep our bigotries in check as we should, but liberal white dickhead is rarely self-aware. You know, <laughs> condescension doesn't really have a bit of a look at itself. <laughs> and if there are English people in the room, white English people, you know what? You might want to fucking keep the condescension down, Rob. Right? <laughs> it's kind of what you're famous for. <laughs> well, sometimes I make fun of my liberal white dickhead and then people presume that means I'm a conservative, right? And like, here's an example of my liberal white dickhead, right? Is when I say things like, oh, oh, how could I be racist? My cat's a black guy. Um, my, my cat is a black guy. Uh, and he's also disabled. I didn't cut my cat's leg off just so I could do a show. I know I'm obsessive, but I draw the line. My cat is black and disabled, and he's also a white supremacist. Uh, very self-loathing is our skedaddle. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> but let me, you know, liberal white dickhead is like guilty of covert racism. Sometimes the reason you're being racist is the thing, is the, you know, is the very reason you think you're not, right? For, um, for instance, all right, Scotland is a very white place, right? So I know you have trouble admitting this, but be honest. Be honest. As a white person, do you sometimes have a particular smile you reserve for black people in the street to let them know you're not racist. <laughs> Don't deny it, you know the one. It's like a thin smile, like... Mm. <laughs> Why do I do that? It's like I'm desperately trying to convey, mm, sorry about the others. <laughs> it's almost like I'm trying to say with my eyebrows up and down, like, oh, if I was American, I would have voted for him. I would have voted for him. <laughs> I wasn't black. I don't like the options. I don't like the options. <laughs> if you're still trying to place the smile, it's the same smile that men pull at women at night on public transport to let you know we're not a rapist. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the longer you do it, it becomes counterproductive. <laughs> Let it happen.
seven. <laughs> I mean, if there's too many, I'll call someone, but I'm married, I quite like her. <laughs> I'm not a feminist, but I accept it's something I want. <laughs> you know, when guys go, I consider myself a feminist. So yeah, really, you know what? Anytime someone begins a sentence with, I consider myself, you should only follow up with, a fucking prick. <laughs> I consider myself, you're a prick! Oh. Uh, and, and <laughs> don't make me follow you home to ensure your sense of security. <laughs> but let, let me give you my, my favourite example of my liberal white dickhead in action, right? Was I was in Singapore, right? And I was the only white comic on the bill. It was all Asian comics, right? As a matter of fact, I was pretty much the only white guy in the room. And throughout Asia, uh, like through every continent on this planet, they all have stereotypes and jokes about one another that we are not remotely party to. Throughout Africa, from country to country, they have jokes and stereotypes they rib each other with. As we do in Europe, as they do in the United States, and as they do in Asia. Of course they do, it's fucking massive. Right? And the thing is, these guys are on stage absolutely lifting the roof off. And everyone's having a blast, right? And it's like, and, and the Singaporeans are shitting on the Cantonese. The Cantonese are shitting on the Mandarins. The Mandarins are shitting on the Japanese. And, and everyone's shitting on the Malays. And, and apparently the Malays can go fuck themselves. I don't, I don't even know what that's about. They're, they're like the Latvia of Asia. Seriously, you ever been to Latvia? And you go, who do you make fun of? We kick our dogs. <laughs> Estonian shit on us, we've got nothing. <laughs> so these guys are absolutely killing with these jokes, right? And that and liberal white dickhead here is up the back of the room just going, oh no, 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 This is racist. <laughs> You're all Asian. <laughs> Took too long for some of you. <laughs> that is my favourite kind of joke. You know the one that hangs in the air and you have to consider who the butt of the joke is? And then you realise the target was your inner dilemma. Right? <laughs> but that's me, buddy, intellectualising and moralising over why we laugh and fucking hell, I will be so glad when that bullshit's over, when we grow out of that. You know, it's an involuntary response. You're laughing because you're surprised. That's all there is to it. I don't understand why there's this intellectualizing backslapping. You know, if we're going to give ourselves credit for an involuntary response, how come whenever someone sneezes, instead of saying, bless you, we don't go, oh, you're a fucking genius. <laughs> and I'll give you an example of this, right? Is uh, my buddy Rob Pactor, give you the idea of like where Mark and I grew up, right? It's uh, in Perth, Western Australia. My mate Rob Pactor has a buddy in his cricket club who has Tourette's, uh, the swearing Tourette's, which is rare, but he has it, right? And and they're coming out of the cricket club, and there's this Aussie bloke, big bruising Aussie dad, with his little boy and his little girl. And as they walk out of the cricket club, the guy with Tourette's just uncontrollably just says to the little girl, just goes, fucking little cunt, right? And naturally, the dad goes, you fucking what, mate? And, and the guys are going, no, 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 he's got Tourette's, he's got Tourette's. They're getting his card out and shit, mate. He's got Tourette's. And, and the dad goes, yeah, I don't fucking care. Bang! <laughs> Now, if there's any part of you going, oh yes, but I am laughing ironically. I am laughing at the perpetrator. Fuck you, that's worse. Oh, the guy with Tourette's isn't any less punched oh, in the head just because you were fucking warm. Oh, hey, hey, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Make a noise, join your show. That doesn't matter, he's just enjoying himself. That doesn't give you the right to put your hands on him, mate. That's not okay. Fuck off, you're making spastic jokes, you deaf cunt. Did you just say you're the one making spastic jokes, you deaf cunt? Do you have any idea what that sentence even means, son? Do you want to go? Do I want to, what do I want to go? No, I'm not 16. What are you going to do? Sit the fuck down, dude. You sit the fuck down right now. You are in the wrong room, son. Sit it, yeah, you picked the wrong fucking dog of ass in the house, you can't get it. But that's it, yeah. Oh, yeah!
shows. A couple of years ago, I faked a racist argument, and some people dismissed it as an Andy Kaufman ripoff. I really hope I made it clear this time. It's a fucking wrestling ripoff. <laughs> so I'm trying to take up so much room. I was really worried someone was going to get hurt. No one gets hurt unless I stop. <laughs> Wrestler to work a five second match for 28 days. <laughs> <laughs> 